<laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Friday Live. So my name is Ashley Hay. I'm a mixed media artist and also the importer of Powtex for Australia. I love the Powtex products and I'm excited to be here again with you today to share more about my love of these products. So, of course, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a little bit of a dive into some mixed media and creating text with Powtex Art Supplies. So there are so many possibilities and so many different ways that you can approach this. But I thought with Easter coming up next weekend, it would be really nice to take one of our beautiful Powtex papers, which you can see in front of me here. And so this is actually the rabbit one that I talked about last week. And um, so I'm actually... I've just decoupaged it onto a board. So I'll show you that. So this is the um, rabbit just simply decoupaged onto a board. And I will take you down to the art table shortly and show you uh, a little bit closer what he actually or she actually looks like because I'm going to do this one for my niece. So um, as I said last week, there are actually oh, um, quite a few lovely papers that are available from Powertex. And these particular ones, I can't remember um, her name, but they're done for Powertex by a French girl. And they're just gorgeous. And they're so much fun if you are looking for a nursery item. So let me just put you so that you can see the art table here. Hang on. I'll just do that and then you can see what I'm talking about with better images. So there's the rabbit that we're going to do today. Here's a bit of a monkey and uh, a guinea pig or hamster depending on where you are in the world and of course a gorgeous koala. So you can see how these particular papers would just be absolutely delightful for a nursery and, you know, to be able to do some really gorgeous things with them um, for grandies or for your kids or for their bedrooms, uh, so depending on what they love. So I thought with Easter coming up, as I say, we would do the rabbit. Now, um, as I said last week, there uh, has been quite a few people watching the how to transfer photos onto Canvas video on YouTube. So if you haven't taken a look at that one, you might want to have a look at it. Um, the process is the same, whether you're transferring onto board. on. So this is actually a cradled board um, onto canvas, onto metal, whatever you're transferring onto wood. Uh, the process is essentially the same. There's just different tips for each of the different surfaces, which when you play with it, you will definitely work out. So all I've done for this particular one is I've simply used Easy Coat Glossy to actually collage it on. So I took the paper, I tore it out, as you can see, there is a rough edge around the edge of it here. So I just took the paper, tore it out. I actually, just a little tip for you, I got a spray mist bottle and I spray misted the back of it. Then I painted the Easy Coat Glossy onto that. And then I simply flat, making sure I didn't get any air bubbles. Then I've put a coat of either at the top of cradled boards a real work on um you know they've if surface worry about canvas moving and so the texture really fabulous now if you don't get hold of those where you are looking <laughs> over um so yeah, if you can't get hold of those cradled boards where you are, then you can actually uh, make them yourself. So you just need to put some wood on the backing and then glue your um, board down and clamp it on. So it's a little bit more mucking around, but they are definitely worth um, actually playing with. And uh, please let me know um, 
you know, if the video is pixelating, I do need to sort out my internet down here for doing the lives and I think it might be pixelating. So anyway, it'll be what it'll be this week. Hopefully you can all see it. Um, and uh, over the next two weeks, I'm up in Coral Bay, but I might actually try and pre-record a couple of videos so that I can um, upload them so that you can watch them over the next couple of weeks. I'll see how it goes. <laughs> I am pushed for a bit of time. So we've got um, quite a few people on here with me. So uh, welcome to everyone who is watching live. So it's always lovely to have you here and actually watching me live. So that's Donna from Canada. Lovely to see you. And I think it's Nina from Kansas and uh, Donna's just saying, oh my gosh, that rabbit picture is so cute. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and yeah, Nina's just saying, yeah, it is very blurry. So um, oh, there's probably nothing I can do about it at this stage. Um, so I'm really sorry, everyone. Hopefully you can still uh, get it and understand it. I might have to... Um, do it again. How annoying. <laughs> um, okay, just let me know if the if you can hear me through the audio um, and uh, that might be um, more helpful. So, um, so long as you can hear me, if, if the image is a little bit blurry, I know it's annoying, but um, yeah, hopefully you can hear me. So just let me know. Uh, Donna's just saying that, yes, the audio and video are actually pixelating. So um, if I lose you, um, I will pop back on. Let me just see what I can do here. Um, okay, I don't think there's a lot that I can do because I don't seem to have another network available. All right, so I'm just going to keep going and... Uh, Hopefully, yes, um, Nina's saying I can hear. So if you can hear and you can't see, that at least is something. Um, and uh, yes, the rabbit is absolutely gorgeous. So let's do this. Um, so Donna's just saying it's not too bad, um, but you <laughs> and you can't be perfect all of the time. Thanks, Donna. It's actually because I'm in my new um, studio and so the internet isn't fantastic down here. So when I get back from up north at Coral Bay, which is where I'm going next week, um, I will be um, looking into how I can actually get a better internet connection here so that it is really, really good. All right. So for those of you who love mixed media, that's what we're going to play with today. We're going to take some texture onto these and uh, we're going to play with texture and mixed media with this Easter rabbit. Now, as I say, you could actually do him as a photo transfer, but for the purposes of this, you really don't need to. Um, so I've just simply done her as a photo collage using the decoupage, Easy Coat Glossy decoupage. So the reason I like using the Easy Coat Glossy is because it is actually waterproof. And so what is going to happen is when I work the mixed media on here, I can actually wipe it back. Now, I'm just going to show you a couple of things. So I'll head back down to the arty table again. So you get a full view of the actual art table there. And I'll take that banner off so that you can um, see it. So um, like I said, I'm using those papers uh, from Powertex and today I've just done it as a decoupage, but you could also do it as a um, power print. So let me show you these um, before we go too far. And so uh, this is actually... Um, a power print that I've done. And so you can see here, this is actually the photograph. And then you can see I've taken a whole lot of different mixed media into, into this. And um, so I just wanted to show you a couple of examples of what is actually possible. So um, this was actually Smeagol's pool. And then I've 
um, use stone art and stenciling and crackling and lots of variety of techniques. If you do love that, I have got a um, online workshop where it is photo transfers and mixed media and I actually show the complete making of this particular piece. So um, this is another one so that I have also done on that photo transfer course. Now you can see it's got different techniques applied and the textures are just really lovely. So again, I show you in that particular online course, step by step through all of um, the processes. I'm not sure I put it in the link, but if I haven't, I will add the link there for you in the description um, after the live. So there you have it. There's the photo. And um, I really like the photo transfer because you get the texture of the canvas coming through. So it's not so... Um, so it doesn't look like it's just been collaged on. It looks more like part of the artwork. And um, then I've used, again, stone art and I've used a lot of pigments and a lot of variety of techniques. So if this is something that is of interest to you, um, then I do highly recommend that photo transfer and mixed media course. It is actually excellent. Um, I really loved making it. And um, so if you like uh, the look of some of the textures today, this is like Friday Live on steroids. <laughs> so um, where I explain everything and you get um, all the opportunity as well to ask me questions along the way if you're stuck with anything. So what I thought we'd do today is I thought we'd use um, some easy 3D flex. So I will show you something of that as well. Um, and I'll just pop you onto full screen there so that you can see that. Okay, so this is actually done with easy 3D flex. It is not finished, but you can see how um, you get amazing crackle. Now, this might be, I might um, actually record how I finish this one as um, one of the ones that I pre-record for you so that you can see how I take it from this and actually highlight it and finish it off. But I will also look at... Um, at actually finish the, fin finishing the bunny for you. But you can see those little crackles and uh, everything are just really, really gorgeous. And so once I take more light back into that, it's actually going to look really, really nice. So that's what I thought I'd show you today. I also thought I'd show you a bit of structure paste uh, using... Um, Easy Structure, which is a fantastic modelling paste from Powtex. So the reason I do love it is because it actually, um, I'm just thinking, have I got a palette knife here? I think I have. Um, but the um, Easy 3D Flex um, is so versatile. And then the Easy Structure, I love it because it dries so fast and so I can keep going with whatever I'm doing. So there's lots and lots of playful things that you can do. Oops, I dropped that. That wasn't so uh, great. So let's take a look and let's go down and get into a bit of a demo. Now, um, I'll just say that last week we did have a bit of fun making Rosie Rabbit on Sunday. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. And if anyone did miss out on making Rosie, I think you can see her in the background over there. Um, you can actually uh, come along on Mother's, uh, not on Mother's Day, but just before Mother's Day, you might like to make her as a gift or you might like to make the ra Lady in Rags, which is also behind me as a gift. Both of those workshops are coming up. So um, if you do live in WA, come along and visit my new studio. Um, okay, so, um, oh, and I'll show you Fozzy Rabbit at the end. So you have to stay to the end to have a look at Rosemary's Fozzy Rabbit because he is just gorgeous. I showed you my racing rabbit last week. And um, as I said to you, Rosemary and I got together and we had a little bit of a play. And so hers is a little bit different to mine. I'm just looking at him over there. <laughs> So he's a bit gorgeous. All right. So um, if you have any questions along the way, just uh, let me know. All righty. Let's get on to this. So I've got some 
uh, 3D sand here, and uh, so which is excellent. So let's just pop down to the art table so you can see everything. So I've got the 3D sand here. Now you can actually get the 3D sand like this, or you can get it um, in a little starter um, samples. And the starter um, is actually really good, particularly if you love texture. So you can see you've got some small balls, medium balls, large balls, and you've got but also got some of the sand there. So that's actually a really cool pack to use. And it actually, um, you know, there's more in it than there looks to be. And I actually store them like this in um, these uh, plastic containers that you get from the cheap shop. All right, so I'm using Easy Structure um, from Powertex. You can use any modelling paste that you like. The 3D sand is actually a special, um, like a synthetic sand, so it's not like a real sand. It is, and it's really nice to use. It really um, does some beautiful things with um, the, both the Powertex and whatever you mix it with. So. Uh, Donna's just saying that she finally used the uh, 3D Flex for the first time in the past week. It really does give you bigger cracks if you put it on a bit thick, exactly. And uh, can they be touched up if, if the cracks are too big? Absolutely. Uh, you can do so much, Donna, and um, if it cracks so much that they actually um, fall off, you can actually just, um, you know, re-adhere the any bits that do come off with um, some Powertex. So the great thing with the Powertex Ultimate Medium is it acts like an adhesive as well as a hardener, and it's just so versatile. So yes, yeah, so um, definitely fix it up. So you can fix it up however you like. I love um, putting um, wax in some of the cracks as well, and actually filling them uh, with that. So. All right, let's take a look at the, uh, I'll just take your comment down. And um, Nina's just asking what size is the picture and the canvas? So great question, Nina. So um, the canvas is actually uh, 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres and the image is an A4 um, image. So this is an A4 page. And so you can see it's slightly smaller than an A4 page there. But it's a great size to start with. And um, the 30 by 30, I find that size is a really nice size for experimentation. It's not too small, it's not too big, and you can really play around with some different structures. So um, I also have just some simple cut boards, but if you happen to do a fantastic piece, then like I said earlier, I can just make a little frame for the back and I can actually adhere my piece on so that it's uh, more structural like this. And they do look really, really nice um, when they are framed up as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going, I'm a bit short on my tools here because I was trying to make sure that the lighting and everything was right here today. So you can see what I've done with my easy structure. I like to put some um, plastic wrap on the inside and I actually um, take out the, any air bubbles and just make sure it's tight on top of that easy structure. That keeps it nice and fresh if I um, haven't used it for a while. And um, you'll find that it um, just will give you more longevity with your actual um, structure paste. So look how nice that is. So I can actually take some of that straight onto there and I can pop some of the sand straight into that structure paste as well. And it gives us a really nice gritty sort of texture um, that's actually, you know, really nice to work with. So if I wanted, I could mix it over on like a palette here. Um, like I've got, but there's really no point. I can actually use my um, my canvas as a bit of a palette and I can put as much or as little of that sand in as I want, but you don't kind of want it to split. 
So you can see I've done it there for you so you can see what I mean. See how it kind of splits if you actually have too much um, sand in it. So you don't want more than about 50% sand, but it is just so gorgeous and gives you such a, a nice base texture to use. So that's the structure paste, the easy structure and sand. And, um, you know, I can add Powtex into the mix as well if I want, but there's not a lot of point in doing that. Um, now, what I thought, I'm just going to take some of this off because I'm going to make a bigger crackle for down there. So I'm going to make sure that I'm kind of coming into the surface of this photo. I don't want to destroy his little um, bunny ears there. So if I wanted to, I could get a damp cloth and I could actually, you know, wipe that back. Um, but I do like to make the piece look like the, you know, it's it's deliberate how um, the texture comes in so that you're sort of camouflaging the fact that it's a photograph. So this is fantastic for, um, hang on, I'll just talk to you directly so you can see me. This is um you know, decoupaging an image on like this is fantastic for people who can't actually draw and it still allows you to be creative and have a really lovely focal point. And my hope would be that eventually you go, oh, I really want to draw my own images. So it's really a starting point for people who want to play with texture, create a bit of a focal point. So you might have some lovely photographs of your children dancing or doing sport or whatever or the grandies um, and that you might want to play with mixed media and there's so many beautiful photographs that I'm sure that you've taken that you could then take into mixed media and it just um, gives you that bit of a focal point to start with and then you can play with your texture and mixed media around it and be as creative as you like and of course if you are are an artist you could actually be transferring your own drawings your own paintings onto um, another surface and then playing and manipulating your own photographs and artwork so the scope is just fantastic so whether you're a beginner or whether you're um, a more professional artist this medium just you know these mediums just allow you so much scope for playing with texture and uh, creating really beautiful alternative art surfaces, uh, which is why I love the Powtex. So I love thinking outside of the square and uh, playing with something a little bit different. Uh, so Donna's just saying, oh, maybe I should have used the uh, structure paste and instead of the 3D flex for my project. So this is where it's helpful, Donna. So, um, you know, I hope that um, all of you out there are being inspired, you know, to try new things, mix things up a bit. Um, but yeah, the structure paste is really good. Now, the other thing that I can do, of course, is I can actually put the structure paste through a stencil if I maybe want some paw prints or something like that. But I have shown that before. But if I want to as well, I can actually get quite, you know, structural with some of this paste and I can, you know, give it a little bit, bit more um, texture and interest and dimension. So you can see that's just the paste on its own. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't um, put you down to the table. Should show you that. Uh, my bad. And uh, <laughs> never mind. So, um, yeah, so uh, you can see here we go. So I just took literally the texture paste out of there and I just literally put it on there and I'll hold it up so you can see. And so you can see that I've just sort of done, done that. Now, if I wanted to play and manipulate that a bit more, I can still do that too. So, you know, I can um, get my palette knife and I can play around with it a bit more 
I can get some textured um, items and scratch into it. So um, you can get some fantastic tools from the hardware store, which, you know, you get some uh, great textures like this sort of thing. And, you know, you can actually um, take that into it as well. And it's really good to keep your palette knife clean too. And, um, you know, you can sort of manipulate uh, that around however you want. So it's flatter in some areas and more textured in others. So you can see what I'm doing. You're losing the edge of that um, photograph. And what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd like to have some big cracks down here. So it looks a little bit like he's coming out of a hole. So um, that's the, the easy structure anyway. And so you get the idea of, you know, how beautiful that can um, actually be. And popping that sand on there, the sand is just so... Um, wonderful it really gives gorgeous texture now of course you can use um, other you know sands and uh, natural materials as well like you don't have to use this um, synthetic sand but what I do like about this is that it kind of gets a grittiness without it being really um, sandy so you sort of get really like I don't know if you can see that let me hold that up for you again I'll see if I can catch the light on it so you can see that it's actually got layers of texture happening in there and so it it gets this sort of layered texture look so of course later when you take your colors onto it um, you know you're going to get really um, gorgeous effects where you've got higher and lower um, textures so it's just a case of playing and one thing I will say is uh, a key thing is that you want to have it so that you've got variation on your textures so you don't want it the same everywhere you want it to have a uh, variety so I want to make him look like he's popping out of a hole and sort of peeking out. You could um, do it so that she, you put a um, like a bow on her. You could put pretty. You could put some paper flowers around, and um, I might do um, some flowers on this one um, simply because it is going to be for my niece. So I can add some paper flowers later. But what I will do is I will work with the texture. I'll work with the colours, and then I might add some other elements on so I'll um, endeavor before I go to Coral Bay to actually do some pre-recordings so I did have a plan for coming live from Coral Bay and what I do but I think it's nice to actually see things through so that you don't just get a snippet of something all right so that's the 3d sand and the structure paste and I'll put my um, glad wrap or plastic wrap back on um, after the live so that it really um, is nice in there. And so then I thought I'd just show you quickly uh, the 3D flex. So with the 3D flex, you do need some um, ivory Powtex. You can use any uh, paint to kind of bind it. So do experiment. And um, if you are in Australia and you haven't got any Powtex and you want to give this a go, then like I say, that um, photo transfer and mixed media course that I've done, which is on Ashley Hay Art Academy, you will find um, that if within Australia you can get a fantastic product bundle with the course that actually will give you you everything that you need to get started with mixed media and to actually do um, both those projects that I showed you earlier. So uh, being really organised today, I've got my big bottle of Powtex here. It has had a little bit of a shake and uh, I can see I haven't got um, my spatula here, which is really interesting. Uh, the things that happen live, right? 
Okay, and I've got, so that's just the Powtex Ivory, and then I've got um, Easy 3D Flex, which is absolutely wonderful, and it is so versatile for mixed media. It is really, really awesome. There is so much that you can do with it so I just want to I'm going to make quite a stiff mix with this and I'm just going to have to use this palette knife that I've got here because I haven't got my proper stirrer but that's okay we'll get away with it I'm sure I should have just done it on the ice cream lid I might just see if I can whack it out onto there because it'll probably be easier with this stirrer. Like that. Because I've got a palette knife. So what I normally have is I normally have like a um, couple of flat plastic tools for stirring the 3D flex, um, which you can just get from the hardware store. Okay, that's better, can get in there. So you can see that that's still very, very um, mushy. Now I can use it like this. Um, so I can actually use a more runny mix and it's just gonna give me a different texture again. All right, so I can actually do that. I could play with putting sand into that. So if you've got an idea, just try it. Try a few different things and see what happens. And um, But definitely, you know, like Donna said, when you do the um, 3D flex thick, you do get really gorgeous, um, you know, big cracks, which I'd like to go for a few big cracks. But we could also do a few mini cracks. Now, with the mini cracks, I'm going to add a little bit of water to it so that it kind of splits the mix a bit. So I'll just get my spray bottle here and add a bit of water into that. It makes it more creamy, more runny. So where shall I do some? See if we can get some mini cracks happening on here. So where we've got that sand, we might just have a little bit of mini crackle stuff, maybe a little bit of mini cracking here. Maybe down in this corner. Now, this will need to um, set for uh, 24 hours to actually get the crackle effects. Um, and there's different, like sometimes it works really, really well and then sometimes you don't get the effect that you are after. It's just trial and error and experimentation. And the more you do, the better you'll get with it. So I'll just show you. Um, that close up and hold it in for you and let it focus on that so you can see you've got the contrasting textures it is a little bit smoother here which is tending to be a bit more reflective so you can't really see it that well um, but here I've now got a thicker mix of 3d flex and I can actually I want more 3d flex in it than that so that it's really quite thick and quite stiff so you can see that that is getting harder to stir that's great so that's looking really nice and thick And then I can take that and, like I said, I want to make it sort of look like she's coming out of a little bit of a hole down here. So I'm going to make it so that it's got a bit of a raised 
surface. And I can go onto the photo, so I don't have to, you know, avoid the edge of that photo. I can actually, you know, go right up onto that. Oh, it would be fabulous to see how this turns out. Hopefully it'll look fantastic. All right. Now I could, if I wanted to, I could mix up more 3D flex and do a little bit more. Um, large crackle but what I do want to do is I want to just clean my palette knife off a little bit who's got easy 3d flex and uh, hopefully you're inspired to have a bit of a play so I've just wet that palette knife and what that will mean is that see some of the tops of the textures if I just want it sort of a little bit smoother I want it to flow into some of the other areas it's just going to help and sort of glide across that a little bit also the water on the palette knife is actually going to help it a little with getting those cracks so the addition of the water actually um, uh, assists the easy 3d easy 3d flex to uh, actually get some of those nice cracks but I just think it also you know you can sort of make it look more part of the piece and you've just got a little bit more control over what you're doing so there we go so I'm going to call it a day at that and um, I'll post a pic for you once uh, this dries so I'll have to try and remember to post a pic tomorrow I have got a workshop tomorrow um, but cer certainly I'll do that for you next week if I don't get a chance over the weekend okay so I've made a nice mess and uh, let me just hold that up for you so that you can um, see what I've done there a little bit closer in and um, so this section here that I've just actually done should actually get some nice big uh, cracks in it. I could actually go another thick layer on top of that and then I would get um, even, you know, some bigger cracks. And so I do like a little bit of um, contrast. So it's nice to actually um, get a bit of that happening. So let me just... Um, so we've used we did a little bit to recap we used, did a little bit of free form um, with the easy structure so where I just simply used easy structure on its own you can manipulate that with um, texture tools things that will actually um, move your easy structure around then we took the beautiful easy structure from Powertex art supplies and we actually added some of the 3d sand in which is a really gives you a really beautiful texture and um, it really is um, lovely to play with layers so when you are doing these textural elements it's all about playing with layers so this would be a first layer then I would take a look and I'd go okay what else do I want to put in there do I want to put a bit of fabric do I want to put some cardboard do I want to put some paper flowers what else do I want to do before I put paper flowers though I would probably work with the surface color make sure my surface was really beautiful and then I would um, be thinking about adding that final bling layer where I put some flowers on so we did that and then as you go you can actually add color into the mix as well as you go through these layers so you can play with adding some of the power colors into the easy structure and with that sand mix and see what happens you can um, or you can add the color 
colour at the end with things like your liquid power, your bisters, all my favourite things, and um, your pigment powders and uh, anything that you've got that is water-based, you can play with on top of those textures once you're done. So then we did a little bit with the Easy 3D Flex and Crackle. And as I said, oh, I actually didn't say, but if you want more information on the products, what I have done is I have done a series last year called What Is. So there's a video called What Is Powertex and there's a video called um, What Is Easy 3D Flex. And so you can actually watch those on YouTube and um, there's a whole series of them. I think there's seven or eight videos that just explain some of the different products. So I've done those so that they're really helpful to give you an insight in terms of what the different products do and how you can use them in your artwork. So I hope you have loved today and I hope you're feeling inspired to create for the weekend. And I look forward to re-engaging with people back in the Powertex Australia Creative Hub. So if you are in the hub, please start dropping your artworks back in there again um, and leave comments. And um, we want to see what you're making and what you're doing. So um, let's get that group happening again and um, give each other encouragement. It's such a great group. Everyone is so 